She was beaten. She was strangled. Dismembered. She also was missing two of her arms, and she was also missing part of one leg. Discovered down this Yonkers alley. And you're going to see down the alleyway, that's where the, the garbage uh, containers were. And that's where she was located. Stuffed into plastic bags with blood-stained denim clothes. The woman, a prostitute, police say, but they don't know much more about her. I don't care what a person is or what they do. They're a human being, and her name wasn't Jane Doe. To Detective John Geis, the one-man investigator of the city's cold case unit, the mystery of who she is and where she's from remains unsolved. This dilapidated Midland Avenue storefront used to be a Chinese restaurant and pizzeria when she was found back in June 1992. Just realized that someone was killed here and they were thrown out like garbage. Cops cracked the case of who killed her in 1996. Long Island serial killer Robert Shulman. These are the words of the confessed killer, later convicted of murdering four other women. I took her back to my house and we did some crack. I must have blacked out and when I woke up, she was dead on my floor. I cut her arms off with a hacksaw. I read about this in the paper and I felt bad. Serving just nine years of a life sentence, Shulman died in prison in 2006. And well, that's the mug of, ugly mug of Robert Shulman. Story is a little graphic, so if you've, um, you know, graphic details, uh, but it's not for you, uh, then please do not watch the video. Um, let me tell you how the story, um, Oh, showman uh, came about, and this is actually uh, as we're driving through en route to his uh, former residence, which uh, you'll see. December of 1994, an employee of Suffolk County Public Works, while traveling on Long Island Avenue, uh, to a job site in the town of Medford. He noticed what appeared to be a brand new Rubbermaid garbage can lying kind of on its side amidst other debris at the road's edge. He stopped his pickup to observe the garbage can move, uh, the garbage can kind of more closely, thought to himself that the, uh, you know, uh, that it, it looked odd. Like it was, uh, it, it stunk, you know, like he thought it was like a bad load of meat. When he arrived at the job site, he told his supervisor about this discovery. Um, and he suggested that the personnel just clean up that area, get back the garbage can, uh, to kind of just store for the tools. On his way back from the job site to the garage later that morning, the supervisor pulled over and he went to inspect that garbage can. That's where he discovered a woman's remains. Um, nude body, partially covered with plastic bags and a white towel or a bath mat uh, wrapped around her head. White powdery substance, uh, later determined to be baking soda, uh, visible on her remains. Um, left leg severely uh, was, it was body was battered. Left leg was severed midway between the knee and the groin area. Both arms had been amputated. She had uh, sustained serious blood force trauma to the face, head, eye, nose, mouth. The victim's left arm displayed a tattoo consisting of a red heart. In April of 95, employees at a recycling plant in Brooklyn came upon a second dismembered nude <laughs> And this is the uh, the former home of uh, Shulman and his brother. Well, we'll speak uh, about him <laughs> later on. Um, so a second body was found. Uh, the corpse was discovered on a conveyor belt 
which was halted uh, just before its contents would have been deposited into a compactor, um, tied into a bale, and just kind of transferred to a landfill. The victim was missing her legs. Her right arm was cut, her right arm was cut off um, at the shoulder. Um, you know, the head and torso were stuffed in a black plastic bag. The victim's face badly battered. You know, that was victim number two. Yet another victim. Um, in December of 1995, female. Both her hands had been cut off just above the wrist. Suffered severe head trauma, blood-soaked white t-shirt near her head, uh, a powdery white substance uh, was visible on her um, corpse, and because there was no way to fingerprint the victim, the police released a physical description and a photograph of the, of the tattoo that she had uh, to the news media and requested help from the public in um, identifying her. So they got a tip in December of 1995. Uh, they went to a dress in Hollis, talked to three women, uh, and they were able to identify one of the victims, a prostitute that worked between Jamaica Ave and Francis Lewis Boulevard. Now, they identified that one of the victims um, would got into that. They remember seeing them get into an older blue model Cadillac driven by a white male. And he would frequently be along uh, Jamaica Avenue. The man took the woman not to a motel, but to a residence in Nassau County. He lived in a room in the rear of the first floor, as you could see right there, um, which was entered from the back through a screen and porch. Uh, he would ask the woman to strip and cook his powdered cocaine into crack, using baking soda and water. And this was statements uh, obtained uh, consistent through uh, from five different women about this man's uh, and his habits. Oh, you know, the, the witnesses are able to lead the detective to a house in Hicksville. Um... And, well, that house in Hicksville has the blue Cadillac in the driveway. And the detective uh, is able to determine that there are two people that live in that residence. The Cadillac is registered to Robert Shulman's um, brother. They figure out that Robert Shulman uh, is, in fact, borrowing when he's going... They're able to figure out that Robert Shulman is going out uh, and using his brother's Cadillac. Uh, they, they are able to tie him in as well, not only based through uh, descriptions, but they also find out that, you know, one of uh, the first victims in the Sears uh that was found in the Sears bag, uh, Sears sleeping bag. Well, Robert Shulman has, guess what? A Sears charge card. They're able to tie in two, to, uh, two and two together. So, they bring him in for questioning. And uh, the brother, uh, in case you were wondering, we'll wrap that loose end, uh, was, was found 
to be guilty of helping uh, dispose of the bodies, uh, though they said uh, that they did not have any evidence to prove him guilty of the killings. So after he was caught, discovered, outed, you know, through corroboration from the witnesses, uh, he admitted that he had killed, um, uh, you know, that he had killed these women after blacking out from smoking crack. Uh, he blacked out, he smoked crack, blacked out, found them dead, uh, and not knowing what happened was his uh, defense. Sad story. Sad story from a horrible individual. He was um, sentenced to death. Sentenced to death. Uh, but eventually that was Uh, overturned uh, because New York's death penalty law was not in effect at the time. You know, the death penalty got overturned is what happened. And uh, showman over here lucked out. Lucked out. At first, too, the police charged him with killing two women. While in custody, he admitted to three other murders. And this is traveling around the neighborhood of Shulman, uh, which is in uh, Hicksville, like I mentioned. So he was sentenced to death. Uh, but then that was overturned. And, well, he died of natural causes exactly 10 years and one week after his arrest. His crime spree ran through 1991 to 1995. I'm sure uh, when Robert Shulman met his maker, he did meet the judge 